Hey Vapors, what is up? Abby here. And today we're talking all about Ohm's Law and Coil Resistance. I'm going to be breaking it down for you guys and explaining what does coil resistance mean? How do I know if my coil is high resistance, low resistance? How does that change the output of the vapor? What uh, amp limit means? What do my batteries need to be? How do I know my battery is safe for the coil that I'm vaping on? How do I know what coil I'm vaping on? So if I think about two years ago, two plus years ago, when I first started vaping, Everything was really new and confusing and I didn't really get a lot of good information about kind of safety and coils and what I was really doing until about six months into vaping. And then I started really understanding Ohm's Law, coil resistance, battery safety, all that stuff. So I'm hopefully going to give you guys a good little beginner lesson on coil resistance and your uh, power out output and all that stuff so that you guys will have kind of a little more knowledge and can you know, purchase devices with confidence and make more intellectual decisions with your vaping. The good thing is that more and more manufacturers are listing the ohm minimum and maximum range and your voltage and wattage minimum and maximum range on their website or in a manual when you get the device. So it's making it a lot easier to kind of understand the concept behind it and get the information you need. So first things first, let's talk about coils and ohms and resistance. So your coil is basically what you're heating up to produce the vapor, whether it's in a tank atomizer or a rebuildable tank atomizer or a rebuildable dripping atomizer, whatever atomizer it's in, you have a coil in there. And depending on the size of that coil and the size, the gauge of the wire of that coil, that determines the resistance of the coil itself. So when you look at gauges of wire when you're rebuilding, now this isn't necessarily for newbies, but stick with me here. So if you are looking at the gauges of wire that are offered, you can look at Canthal and you can find gauges of wire from like 32 all the way down to like 22 and further down. But most coils are gonna be using anywhere from 22 to 32 gauge wire. Now, the higher you go up in the number, the skinnier the wire is going to become. So a 32 gauge wire is super skinny, skinny wire and 22 gauge wire is super fat, wide wire. So you want to think of it kind of like a straw, kind of like water moving through a straw. So if you have a bigger straw, it's going to be easier to suck up a bunch of water. Whereas if you have a super tiny, thin, like cocktail, coffee stir type straw, it's gonna be harder to suck the liquid through the straw. So the higher gauge wire, like 32, has a higher resistance. It's harder to get that current through, or in the case of the straw, it's harder to get the liquid through the straw. So 32 gauge wire is gonna be high resistance, and your 22, 24 gauge wire is gonna be low resistance, and then everything there in between. So your ohms works the same way. The higher the ohms, the more resistance. So if you have a two ohm coil, that's gonna be harder to get that current through. It's gonna take longer to heat up. It's gonna take longer for the current to travel through that coil, to produce the vapor, to go into your lungs and blow out. And then if you have a lower gauge wire, which is the bigger straw, it's gonna be easier for the current to travel fast through that coil, heat up, and then produce the vapor that way. And then similarly, the more wraps you have in your coil, the higher the resistance is going to be as well. So just think of it like kind of a twisty, turny straw. And the more twists and turns you're putting into it, the longer it's going to take for the current to go through to heat up the coil and then heat up the vapor. So the longer it takes for the current to travel through, the 
slower the heat up process is gonna be for your coil. So if you're using something like 28 gauge wire and you do six wraps, that's gonna give you a lower resistance than if you did eight or nine wraps. That's gonna give you a higher resistance coil. So the less wraps you have, the lower the resistance for the current to travel through. And then when you get into things like dual coils, that's gonna cut your resistance in half. So say you have 24 gauge canthal, you did seven wraps and you're coming in at 0.6, then if you put an identical coil on the opposite side, you would be coming in at 0.3. So that's why when you see beginner style tanks that have a higher ohm like 2.0, 1.2, it's gonna take you a longer time to heat up that coil. So you're gonna be dragging on that device a little bit longer to kind of build up the heat and then get the vapor from that. So that's why you're not seeing these huge clouds that are coming from these smaller devices. Now that doesn't mean that you can't have a high ohm build produce a lot of vapor because that depends on the power that you're putting into that device, the current that you're running through that coil. And also important to note is the lower resistance your coil, so say you're at a 0.5 or 0.3, that coil is gonna heat up a lot faster and be a lot quicker to produce that vapor, and you're gonna need a lot more airflow. It's also important to note that the lower resistance your coil is, the lower ohm, then it's going to be heating up a lot quicker and a lot faster and get hotter faster and it can lead to a warmer hotter vape than say like a 1.5 resistance coil so the next piece of the ohms law calculation that we're going to talk about is your battery which is the amps or current that you are putting through the coil so there are all sorts of different high drain rechargeable batteries that you can purchase these are both IMR18650 batteries. We've got an EFES and an MXJO. And these are a couple of the batteries that I use. And what you need to do to figure out if your battery can handle the resistance of the coil in the atomizer that you choose to use is basically you need to figure out the amp limit of your battery. Now, some of the batteries will have it on the battery itself or on the website or in the description or wherever you're purchasing your batteries. This one here shows 35 amp high drain rechargeable battery. This one shows a discharge current of 20 amps slash 35 amps. Now the 20 amps is the continuous discharge current. That's what you wanna pay attention to, the continuous amp limit, not the pulse amp limit, which on this battery is 35 amps. You wanna look at the continuous because you are continuously vaping. It's not just a short pulse. And basically those are the amp limit on your battery. That's the most that it can output, that it can push through the coil. So you wanna make sure that your resistance is not too low to where you're gonna overdrain your batteries because they're trying to push so much current through to keep up with the low resistance of your coil build. And that'll kind of make more sense as we put all these pieces together. But basically just know your amp limit on the batteries that you're purchasing. You can do some Googling and find out if you don't have one of these two or if it doesn't say it directly on the battery. I know that uh, tasteyourjuice.com has a really great battery list and amp limits. I'll link it down below so you guys can check it out. But just know that that's one piece of the Ohm's Law puzzle that you need to know. So using the resistance of your coil, the ohms, and using the amplement of your battery, you can figure out the max level of power or voltage and wattage that you can run that coil at. Now, I wouldn't recommend running it at the max, max power because it's probably gonna be too hot of a vape and you're probably gonna end up burning your wick or your e-liquid, but it's good to know the calculation so you know, okay, I can never run it over X amount of watts or X amount of volts. So there is a really, really helpful website that I use whenever I just need a super quick calculation, and that is ohmslawcalculator.com. I will put it down below so you guys can go check it out. But basically, if we wanted to, say, build a 0.5 ohm coil, and we wanted to run it using the EFES battery, which we know is a 20 amp continuous discharge, then using that calculation, you just plug those in, you, into the current field, you would put 20, because that's your amp limit, and into the 
resistance field, you would put 0.5 because that's your ohms. And then you would hit calculate and it's gonna calculate your voltage and wattage kind of max limits for you. And looking at the calculation here, it has 200 watts and 10 volts. Now, obviously you're not gonna be vaping it that high, at least I wouldn't think it would be an enjoyable vape, but that shows you that you could go up to 200 watts and still not worry about your battery. All right guys, so I wanted to quickly just show you this website. As I was talking about it, I realized that it would be really great to just show you how it works. So basically, once you have your amps, which is the current here, and you know that your amplement is 20, and you know that your coil resistance is 0.5 ohms, let's say, you just plug it in there, you can calculate and see kind of the max limit of where you wanna be in terms of your wattage. So you would not be able to use a device over 200 watts, which I don't believe there is a device out there that does that yet. But this also can show you kind of the lowest resistance that you wanna go. So if you're running a mech mod, the, um, a fully charged battery is 4.2 volts is a fully charged battery. So that's kind of a good rule of thumb for the volts to plug in here. And then if you know you are using a 20 amp limit battery, you would put the 20 amp limit there and then you would hit calculate. And that shows you that 0.21 is the lowest resistance that you can go on a fully charged mech mod battery. Now, if you had a battery with a 30 amp limit, let me clear these back out, and you can see that you can go down to 0.14. If you had a 10 amp limit, then you could go down to 0.42. So you can kind of play around with these settings a little bit and see where you would be at. I prefer to build a 0.3 coil and I'm using the lowest amp limit that I have in my batteries is 20. And so I would plug those two in and see that I can run all the way up to 120 watts, which normally I'm at about 4.5 so you can also put the 4.2 back in here and then you can run different resistances in here say you know that you like 0.3 that's normally what i build to and you want to run it on a mech mod you can calculate and see that the amp limit is 14 so you would need to purchase a battery that has a higher amp limit than 14 to run that coil you can also put your amp limit in here and then you could put the max wattage of your device so like say the Segeli 150 you could put that max wattage here you could put your 20 amp limit battery and then you can calculate to find the lowest resistance atomizer you can put on top of that device so that would be 0.375 and that's if you're running it at the 150 watts so this website is just a really nice quick and easy resource to use for playing around as long as you have two of these fields filled out it will fill out the other two for you so you can just go play with this if you know the ohms and the amp limit or if you know the volts and um, your ohms or things like that. So now that you know how to figure out your maximum, maximum voltage and wattage and what your battery and your coil can handle, then you can start experimenting with what you prefer and what you like. I know a question that I get asked so often is how do I know what voltage or what wattage to set my device at? Where's the sweet spot? And the answer is it depends. It depends on what you like. If you like a cooler vape, then turn your voltage or wattage down. If you want a warmer vape, you're gonna to wanna to turn it up. I know for me, I usually set my voltage between four and five. That's just what I'm comfortable with. That's what I like. I don't like a super hot vape, but I like something a little bit warm. And so that's where I normally run it. Right now I'm at 4.9 volts and 70 watts at a 0.3 ohm coil.
So I'm going to link a couple charts below where you guys can see kind of what ohms and what voltage and it's a chart where you can kind of look and see, okay, I'm at 0.5 ohms and I want a cooler vape so I'm going to go at this voltage or I want a warmer vape so I'm going to go at this voltage and it kind of lets you see where that power output is going to be and where that sweet spot is. Now, like I said, I prefer my vape a little bit warmer so I'm on the kind of cusp of getting to the warmer side of the vape. Now, if I turn my voltage down, let's turn it down to four volts, still at 0.3, but now we're down to 46 and a half watts. Much cooler vape, less vapor, I have to kind of drag on it a little bit longer. And because the airflow is so open on this device, I'm not getting as much flavor as I would if it were turned up a little bit more and had more vapor coming out. So for science, let's turn this down again to three and we're at 26 and a half watts. Doesn't even feel like I'm vaping anything to be honest. Less vapor, have to drag longer to get the same satisfying vapor, or at least to me, satisfying. So you can see that you're pushing less current through that coil and it's taking longer to heat up. Let's go back up to five volts and we're at 69.5 watts and I'll show you what that looks like. So for me, for the vapor, that is ideal for me. For the flavor, that's ideal for me. For the warmth of the vapor, that's ideal for me. So it's kind of a trial and error. You have to kind of just experiment. Start low, start your voltage low, and then bump it up by increments of 0.2 or 0.5 and try it and see what you think. And just make sure you're bumping it up like that so that you don't accidentally go too high, burn your coil or burn your cotton or your wicking material, and then you're gonna have to change your coil out and then it's just a bad time for everybody. And just remember that you don't need a super sub-ohm build to blow great clouds. I've built coils that were one ohm, 0.8 ohm, and they blow just as nice, beautiful, dense vapor as when I build 0.3. And it really is kind of a trial and error process. And as long as you know how to calculate your max power output, then you should be fine. So as long as you know what the amp limit on your battery is and the resistance of your coil, you'll be fine. All right guys, so hopefully that was informational and helped you guys out. If I left anything out that you have a question about, please leave a comment below. I plan on doing a lot more videos like this, so don't think that this is the be all end all, all the information you need to know about vaping. I'm doing these in kind of smaller chunks, smaller little tutorials so you can get a little piece of it and hopefully understand it in kind of simple terms and you can build your knowledge off each video that I put out there. As always, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps me out a lot. And make sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye. In most reality shows, I kind of like the 